So we generate our image in Stable Diffusion, and now I want to know how to increase the resolution. So to do this, click on this button over here, and what this will do is send the image to the Extras tab. Now from here, I'll have the option to specify the resize value. So if I select to resize by two, turning Stable Diffusion to make it twice as big. Alternatively, I could use the Scale 2 tab and specify our resolution this way as well. Now, going back to the Scale By tab, you'll notice that upscalers are set to none. And this means that if we try to generate an image right now, nothing will actually happen. And that's because the upscalers haven't been selected. So to select an upscaler, click on the upscaler box. And from here, you'll see a wide range of upscalers. Now, the upscaler you pick depends on the use case you're trying to do. So for images like photos, a certain upscaler may be better, whereas an image of like, say, a cartoon or animation, another upscaler may be better. And so I'll leave this link in the description or somewhere nearby. And it's just a Reddit post which compares all these different upscalers and shows you which ones are more better suited for which application. So back to Stable Diffusion, for this example, I'm going to be using the ESR GAN 4X upscaler. So if I click Generate, now if this is your first time running this upscaler, you'll have to wait a while because the upscaler will actually need to be downloaded. So just like how the face models were downloaded, it may take a little while. Now my image has been generated and I know that it's been upscaled because if I compare the size of the two images, so this was the original image, and now looking at the larger image, you can see that the image is quite literally twice as big. Now moving back to Stable Diffusion, you'll notice that we have another upscaler 2 option. And what this does is we can combine another upscaler if we really wanted to. So I could use an upscaler like Nearest, and then from here, I can select how visible this second upscaler is within our image as well. So I'll select it all the way to one and then click generate. And now comparing the two images, the one where we had only one upscaler and the second image where we have another upscaler, where we had both upscalers, you'll notice that the image itself has changed somewhat. And this is a point I want to bring up is that just because you use two upscalers doesn't automatically mean that your images will be better. So as you can see, with the, when we only had one upscaler, the image looked much more sharper. Whereas when we had the second upscaler with it, the image itself looks a lot more blurrier, especially when I look at the hair over here and compare it to how it was on the first upscaler. Now back in Stable Diffusion, you'll see options for GFP GAN and Codeformer. And we know that these are used for restoring the faces and making them look better. So if I really wanted to, I could take both the Codeformer and GFP GAN and use them both together to generate my images. Now looking at the generated image, you can see at least now his pupils are facing in the right direction. Whereas before when they had no face restoration, you could see that one pupil was pointing one way and another the other way. Now, just like upscalers, using two face restoration models does not automatically mean that your images will look better. So now if I take down the GFP GAN visibility and then generate using Codeformer only. And now if I compare this, so this is Codeformer only, and this is with both face restoration models, you can see that the image does look somewhat different, but even though I only used one face restoration model, the image still looks quite good. So you may have to modify these settings and find a range that works best for you. Now that's it when it comes to upscalers. I highly recommend that you check out the Reddit post where he goes over which upscalers are better for which purposes. And I'll see you in the next video.